Now the first thing you'll see at the top right there is the Zoroa, the shank bone. Now I did a little cheating here. I used a dog bone because I didn't want to waste good meat for a picture. But at a real seder, you should use a real bone. If you're having turkey or chicken for dinner, you might want to use the neck bone in that. But any bone that has some meat on it is fine for this purpose. The Zoroa won't be eaten during the meal, so you can use the same one for both nights of the Seder. The Zoroa represents the Paschal sacrifice that was offered in the days of the Temple. To the left of that, you'll see the Beitza, the roasted egg. The Beitza is never actually explained in the Seder, so there are a lot of different theories about what it's doing there. One of the traditional theories is that it simply represents the Chagiga, the second sacrifice that was offered for the festival on Passover. Another traditional theory is that it's simply there to raise questions. It's put on the table without any explanation so that people will ask why and speculate as to what it means. A modern theory is that it's just a symbol of spring, similar to the Easter egg. But the theory I like is that it represents the Jewish people. It's like the Jewish people in the sense that the more you boil an egg, the harder it gets. And likewise, the Jewish people, the more you oppress them, the tougher they become. This will be eaten during the meal. Next we have the karpas, the green vegetable. Some people use parsley for that, as I have here. Some people use celery or potatoes, but anything that grows from the ground is fine as long as it's kosher for Passover. This will be the first thing we'll be eating tonight once we get to that point. In the middle, we have the maror, the bitter herb. What we have here is horseradish, and I've cut it up into chunks. Now, some people use grated horseradish for this purpose. I would warn you that it does get rather strong that way. In chunks like this, it's not quite as strong. Some people use horseradish from a bottle, which is made with vinegar and sometimes cut with beets. Uh, but that's really kind of cheating. You should use just a horseradish as a vegetable. You can usually find that in the grocery store's produce section around Passover time. Below the maror, we have a second bitter herb. That's called chazeret. In my Seder plate, I'm using romaine lettuce for that purpose. Some people use Belgian endive or some other bitter vegetables. But it's usually some kind of a lettuce-type vegetable that you use for that purpose. And finally, on the Seder plate, we have the haroset, which is a mixture of apple, nuts, wine, and cinnamon. The haroset is supposed to represent the mortar that was used by the slaves in Egypt to do their construction work. So you'll see that some people make it as a smooth paste, and I have some of that at the top. I usually make mine more chunky. I like it that way, and you can see that lower side. But either one of these two is fine. Also on the table, we have a glass of wine. The glass shown here is a five-ounce glass of wine, which will amply satisfy the requirement to have about three and a half ounces of wine on the table. And we'll be drinking at least half of that four times this evening. For children or other people who don't drink alcohol, you can substitute grape juice if necessary. Kedem makes very nice sparkling grape juice for this purpose. In the back, covered by towels, you'll see matzah. Now we've got three pieces of matzah here, and we have a towel in between each one of them. I've put the towels on an angle just so you can see that there's more than one there, but you don't really need to do that. And finally on the table, we have a container of salt water. We'll be using that for dipping the vegetables when we get to that point in the Seder. So that's our Seder plate. We'll be getting started with the Seder in the next clip.